<laughs> Hi, you guys. How's it going? I am so excited that you are here today because we are talking about how to build a business and a baby with Badass Boundaries featuring my very good friend, Tracy Campoli. Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm so happy. You're like one of my favorite people in the world. I'm going to just Insta story us. So oh my gosh, yeah. don't mind me <laughs> while I Insta story us. Hey, Jen, Casey, and hey, everybody. Hey. So happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you guys don't know Tracy, uh, she is a lifestyle and wellness coach that helps women lose weight, get fit, and create bodies and lives they love. She started back years ago doing Pilates and pers as a personal trainer in New York City. And Today, she has a massive, massive YouTube following. She started back in 2010, which I, we got we to gotta unbox that a little bit. Oh. And like, it's like over 147,000 subscribers, huge following, beautiful business. And I'm just so excited to have her here to be able to talk to you guys about what she's built and how beautifully she's built it. Because she is like, I feel like you were like the anti-hustle. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's true. We'll get into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about where, what your business looks like now. Yeah. Where you started and what it looks like now. So where I started, like by nature. So I was a dancer. So hustle is like, and I know you relate. So Jen and I have a few things in common. New York City used to be waiters <laughs> and performers, you know? So like I am no stranger to working my butt off, you know, like as a dancer, there's the saying like, you know, shut up and dance. Like you would have bleeding point shoes and they're like, just keep going. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So obviously like this girl knows how to work, but you know, when I started my business, I definitely for many years was like, you know, push and hustle. And, you know, um, I, I had a brick and mortar Pilates studio in New York. And at the same time, I was building my online business. And I think that's actually really important for people to hear um, because I personally, like, I like having income in the bank. I like not worrying about, like, where's the next client going to come in? Mm -hmm. So when I was getting my Pilates certification, I was still waiting tables, yeah. you know? And then when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm earning enough income as a Pilates instructor, then I started building my uh, online business and I definitely held on to my Pilates studio for too long for various reasons. It was more just like the attachment to my clients, mm -hmm. but you know, I was always kind of building things at the same time. So, but that being said, it meant a lot more work, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely have had moments of like hustling, overworking, sleepless nights. I definitely, I was thinking about this. I had a feeling you might ask me this and you know, one of the main things that shifted for me was my husband. You know, we weren't married at the time, but we were probably engaged or living together. And I remember he said, you know, this isn't worth it. Like you already have a successful business, like with your Pilates. He was like, it is not worth it for you to have sleepless nights over this. And I'm not going to sit there and watch it. And he's like, Mr. Cool. Like he's just <laughs> very chill. Like he's a very like grounded, grounded person. And I was like, you know what? Like I really took it to heart because he loves me. He cares about me. And I was like, I'm not willing to see you have like, Oh my God, like I'm going to launch, you know, like, yeah. And that for whatever reason, it just really helped me to be like, yeah, he's totally right. And so, you know, as you know, like one of the things I say, it's like, I am not available for stressing out. I'm not available for launching to be hard. I'm not available for my business to be something that, that I don't want it to be. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, and so what that forced me to do was to create um, processes, team programs that can all work and build and grow without me. And then Lord knows I'm eight months pregnant right now. <laughs> So knowing that I'm going to have this beautiful baby, you know, and like, I'm not going to sugar, like, do I have everything figured out? Heck no, of course not. I don't. But, you know, I also know from having so many friends that are entrepreneurs and have wildly successful businesses, like, you know, I don't know what it's going to feel like and how much I'm going to want to do when she comes. Mm -hmm. But I also know it's definitely going to be different. So yeah. that's where my focus is right now. It's like how to, to shift things. So it's yeah, so, so that's good. basically one of the differences. And I feel like when I first heard you talk about this, it might have even, I don't know if it was us hanging out in person or maybe when you were on James Wedmore's Mind Your Business podcast. I remember you guys did an interview about launching 
And you said, I just decided that I wasn't available for that, the stress, yeah. the hustle, the freaking out. And that has really stayed with me. So thank you because I say that all the time now. I'm like, yes. I'm not available for that. Not available for that. Not available for that. People are like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not available for that. Like I just, it, for me, it even goes like, it, it's not just on the physical plane of the surface level of like, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. Like, no, my energy, my, I'm not available to take that in. I will not receive it. Like keep it out. Like that sentence has become my gatekeeper. It's such a powerful thing to say because it's, it is exactly to your point. It's twofold. Yeah. It's like you're making the declaration, but you're also hearing yourself say it. Yeah. So it's like reinforcing it. Like I'm not available for stressing out about this. So that being said, what's a different way of thinking? What's mm -hmm. a different way of being? Like, how can I elevate my thoughts? So I'm not like, Oh my God, this is so hard. Like, okay, if I'm not available for that, how can I make this easy? Those are better questions. How can I make this easier? How can I make this more fun? How can I make this more joyful? How can I make this more profitable? How can I make it, this less work? It opens up so much. It's, it really is like, it was like a revolutionary, like concept. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But for you, you know, if, I remember we had a conversation a couple months back, uh, we're in the same mastermind and there was a, a conversation around big girl launches or like the big launch. Yeah. What did that mean to you? Cause I know I had my own like internal representations of like what a big launch had to be and how stressful it had to be and how much work I would have to put in. Yeah. So what did that mean for you? So this is funny cause I, um, it's sort of the same as what I was saying about how I built my business, how I was always kind of like, Oh, I'm doing this while I'm building this. I'm doing this while I'm building this. If I had just been like, okay, and, and I'm not saying don't do this. I'm like, follow your heart, do your thing. But yeah. for me, it was like, I didn't want to be like, F it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't know where the next check is going to come in. Live in New York City. It ain't cheap. I like nice things. I like doing yeah. stuff, you know, like, I'm just going to like, you know, go for it. It's like, no, I was always kind of like step by step by step. Like, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and granted, I've had my own business for 11 years. It's like, it's not new. Um, but big girl launch, it sort of feels the same thing. It's like putting all of your eggs in one basket. So you've got one launch, you've got a month or six weeks or two months or whatever your timeline is to like bring in all this income. And if you F it up or like if, you know, your Facebook ads aren't running or, you know, like there's hiccups and there's always hiccups, like it's just part of life, right? Yeah. Then you're kind of screwed. And I don't like operating that way. And so last year during, you know, one of our mastermind calls, it was Rachel McMichael who you <laughs> love, and she, you know, she was saying like, I don't want to do a big girl launch. And that for whatever reason, I don't know why, but it was like this light bulb of like, you know, I, I don't want to do a big girl launch, but I do want, you know, success and I want to, you know, help more people and I want to have that impact and that income. So that opened me up to like, all right, cool. And like, I launched something from start to finish three weeks easiest, most fun, most profitable. Like it was like what I used to make in a year, like teaching Pilates, like three weeks, you know? And, um, and, and again, I really attribute that to, and it was a big hit. Like we hit my, you know, we always have good, better, best goals. Mm -hmm. We hit my best goal. Um, I had no idea how we were going to do it. And it was, it was just this decision of just stepping into the decision of like, this is going to be fun. This is going to be easy. We're going all the way. Like, let's go. Yeah. You know, and, and that changed everything. Like I realized now looking back and I'm not saying everyone should do this, but like I launched three times in my first trimester, three different things. <laughs> like, I think part of that was, you know, just for anyone like wanting to start here, I was a little nervous uh -huh. <laughs> about being pregnant and like wanting her to stay, you know, that I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, like when I think back, I'm sure there was a little bit of like, but it was all easy. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was like going to sleep at like seven o'clock, like on the couch, you know, like no joke. Um, but yeah, I mean, so launching to me, it's like, I'm just, again, I'm not available for it being scary or hard or, you know, we're always, I feel like as entrepreneurs looking for like, what's the formula? What's the mm. winning thing? And you know, one of the main things that we forget is like the winning thing is you Mm -hmm. your energy. It's like, what are you putting out there? And so if you're in this like closed off tight, like, Oh my God, I can't shower. I can't do anything. I can't like, like my last launch that I did cart open, I was in New York city, you know, like on a plane and like 
was like going there for a baby shower the next day. You know, yeah. it was like, there was no space for like freaking out. It was like, I was with my husband. He had the day off. We, we got off the plane, went to a fabulous lunch. And I was like, oh, great. I have to do this Facebook live now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get your baby shower and you're like, I'm in the middle of a launch. And we're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Fine. You know, cause so it's it, I, like, we signed up for this, right? This is something we want to do. Yeah. Like we certainly like, look, I was waiting tables, right? I remember being like 25 being like, I'm going to be waiting tables forever. And it's like, I didn't have the vision and the dream of starting a business. So I could be basically doing the same thing. And so like crying at the coffee machine, you know, like crying at my desk, like in front Ooh. of my laptop. You know, it's like, I wanted freedom. I wanted flexibility. I wanted abundance. I, you know, and that's, that's what I'm available for. Oh my God. This is, this is so good. There's so many things to unpack. I think what you just said right there of the, the visual of crying at your desk as an entrepreneur, I talked to so many people who they start a business for freedom and then spend more time in the trenches, make no money. They're paying yeah. out, even if they have a team, they're paying out their team. They're, they're having to pay all this money in taxes and yeah. for what? They're yeah. not having fun. No. It's not profitable. It's, it's just so fascinating to me. And I think that's such a powerful comparison because I don't think people recognize that. It's like, I'll do it for the business. I'll do it for the hustle. But you got to know your numbers too. Oh God. Yeah. Like, we could have a whole you know, podcast. Okay, yeah. Like, like you got to know, like, I mean, I have friends that are seven figure business owners and like their profit margins, not so bueno, you know? And it's like, mm. that's important. And like, that's on you. Like you got to pay attention to that because ain't nobody else going to pay more attention than you. A freaking man. Yeah. I mean, I, over the last couple of years, the more that, you know, we're surrounded by people who are six, seven, you know, close to eight figure entrepreneurs. It's really fascinating to me to, to learn through them and see, oh yeah, I had to pay $250,000 in back taxes, or I had to do this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, Oh, wow. That's sort of like a, a, a good warning of like, if you don't know your numbers now, guys, this is a call to action to go and like unpack your books and like really look at your profit and loss and see like, where's your money going? Are you, you could, you could be making six figures a month and be losing money. And yep. I don't think people get that because everyone's so obsessed with marketing. Oh, look at my big launch numbers. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that, that could be a whole other yeah. whole other episode. But By the way, my, my non-big girl launch was like not a dollar spent on advertising. Ooh, well, you are also, you're like a content ninja. You're an organic marketing ninja. I do want to talk quickly about, yeah. you said that um, with the last launch, you kind of were removing yourself from the how. Mm -hmm. And you're amazing at that because you own the fact that you don't know all the things in your business. And I was the opposite. I'm like, I know how to do all the things. And that actually holds me back because if it's not done, I go and do it instead of yeah. having someone on my team do it. And yeah. so I actually think it's so fascinating that you've had that in your business because your expertise is in health and fitness. Yeah. So I, you know, it's funny. So I, I do not know how to make an opt-in page we were just talking earlier. I don't know how to make a slide, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's just be really clear. So I think it's hilarious because I have like in my membership program, I have like thousands of ladies. It's all delivered through email, like, you know, through the website, um, you know, tech heavy in the sense of like it's videos. It's like, I don't know how, I wouldn't know how to load a video to our site. <laughs> I don't know when someone's like, oh, I, my password has changed and I don't know how to do it. I'm like, I'm no help. Like now the, all the members are starting to understand that. Um, and you know, the truth be told, it's like, look, you're Jen, you're so brilliant. You're such a smart woman. And it's, you know, and you, as you well know, like sometimes I'll get in a room full of entrepreneurs and I'll feel like, Oh my God, you guys know so much more than I do. But at the same time, it's like, but the whole point of doing this is focusing on the things that you're really great at. And what I'm great at is what I call tap dancing on the front lines. Mm -hmm. Now I, I like to, and it's funny because I'm not a tap dancer, but, I'm a um, but uh, you know, I, I love, you know, creating the content, creating videos. I love, you know, doing like Facebook lives and just doing like the more front facing things. Um, but I, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I mean, I know how to send an email, you know, yeah. like, and I know how to use my, my, my infusion soft and send emails, but I don't know how to set up campaigns. I don't know how to do any of that. And yet my business has all of that stuff in it. It's just, I let go and I go, okay, great. I know what the vision is and I know how I want things to look. 
and I get the people in to do the things so that it all works. Mm. Um, and if I was doing that, I mean, it would be such a waste of time, even slides. Yeah. Sure. You know, could I learn how to figure out like how to make slides, but it's like, or I could just ask my assistant and be like, here's the content, do it. And it'll take her an hour. Yeah. You know, if that, and that's her zone. She takes <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe an hour. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I think that you just gave so many people permission to not have to be techie and learn all the things. And I do teach how to do a lot of the techie things within my business. But I think what's been really interesting is I actually pull back from that now. And I recommend that people don't even get into that. I'm like, just take this tutorial, give it to someone else. Yeah. Like you do totally. not even need to get your hands in there. No. I mean, I didn't even know the first few years of having an online business and I'm talking, you know, I was already doing like six figures. I didn't even know how to send an email. I didn't know how to use, like, I think I was using MailChimp at the time. I didn't know how to use it. I finally was like, maybe I should learn this just in case like you're sick or if I have an idea and I just want to quickly, you know, send out a message, you know, we get inspired or whatever. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you don't have to know all the things you really don't. At I appreciate all. that so much. I think that's... Or should you funny. pay attention to all of it, you know, because not, not a good use of your time. Yeah. And I think this really ties into the way that you show up. Like all of this is, is the way that you create boundaries in your business of what you're available for and what you're not available for. And so yeah. for you, when you are bringing people on and you're creating these boundaries, is, is there some thought process or a certain belief that you have around? And I know we kind of touched on it a little bit already, but is there one specific belief do you mean like bringing on team or do you mean just like in the business in general? Yeah. When you're bringing on a team member, when you're bringing on somebody to take on something, a lot of people have a, have beliefs around, well, no one can do it better than me or, yeah. you know, I have to figure things out. Or if people see that I have team members and I'm not doing it, they won't want to pay me or they won't see it as as valuable. You know, there's so many stories that we can create around running a problem. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually have the complete opposite belief. So I, even when I was teaching Pilates, you know, like, you know, in a brick and mortar studio, it's like smart people know, like you don't know everything, mm -hmm. right? You don't know everything. Um, God, I could get political, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can read between the lines here. But really smart people don't think that they know everything, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I truly, you know, even with my team, I'm always like, I need you because you're so much smarter than me, you know, when it comes to this, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I don't know how, you know, we laugh about it. Cause I'm like, I don't know how you do that, but this is what I, this is what I want it to do. So go ahead and do that. Like make that happen. Okay. But I do think that it's like when you focus on what you're really good at and then you just bring in the people. You know, I want people on my team that are way smarter than me, that are way more equipped to do all of the things so that my energy can be focused on doing what I'm really great at. And that's just going to be better for the business and better for everyone. Yeah. And you really are like a ninja at leveraging your own time and making sure that you only focus on the things that yeah. you are good at. And I think that really attributed, I'm sure, to being able to grow a massive YouTube channel with like hundreds of videos and a membership with hundreds of videos and all this content so that you could really serve your, your audience. I mean, you have a huge audience. Yeah. So like you have 147,000 subscribers in this moment on YouTube. Yeah. So what? crazy. Like that, how many years have you been doing it? I've been doing it for a long time. So this, you know, this for me, like I didn't have rapid growth, but here's the difference. Like I never set out to be like a YouTuber, like yeah. ever. Like I always use YouTube as a marketing tool, even when I didn't quite know that. Mm -hmm. But I always like thought of it as, and I've spoken at YouTube about this, you know, and they're like, hey, whoa, like <laughs> way to think. I'm like, I get it that in the environment right now, being an influencer, being a YouTuber is like a viable career. However, I think it's a really slow road to, you know, like YouTube has never paid my rent. Now, granted, I live in Miami now and I live in New York <laughs> City. Rent ain't cheap, you know, so let's start there. But now YouTube does pay my rent in the sense of because of my membership, because of deals with brands, mm. you know, because of, you know, programs or people finding me and discovering me through like a silly little arm workout, you know? Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the lead generation system. 
Absolutely. So, so yeah, it's, it's always been, you know, the, the megaphone for me of like, okay, how can I reach the most people? How can I create the most impact, um, in, in, you know, the right way. And it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we mature in different ways yeah. years before I'd be like, mm, I didn't want to just be known as like the arm workout girl. Now I'm like, girl, you find me through that bat wings video. I'm not, <laughs> nothing makes me happier because that one video, you know, which was like, I just come back from vacation. It was shot with a camcorder has literally probably at this point made me like a half a million dollars. Wow. That one okay, video. Just so that people, because some people don't have context for what we're talking about. This is like also the power of having a, a, like, a, a, like a niched video or solving a yes. really specific problem, especially on YouTube where people yeah. are literally typing in something specific at the search engine. Your video is about how to get the, when you say bat wing video, you're talking about like the arm, the, the hanging dingle dangle. Bat, the dingle dangle, the little floppies. <laughs> yeah. So it's called a bat wing and the video yeah. is about, it's like a, a quick workout video, right? Yep. About Quick workout. It was literally like, I was like, oh, I hear people kind of talking about this. Let me make a video. It is my number one video, like at least my number one subject. Yeah. And uh, truly, I mean, almost anyone that's even hired me for high end coaching, they're like, oh, I found you on YouTube. I was looking for bat wings. Wow. And that's the power of YouTube too, because it's not going to go away. You know, I know Instagram is such like a hot topic. I was actually just talking to someone on my team about this. Mm -hmm. um, who helps me with brands and, you know, like brand deals and things like that. And, and now it's interesting because so many people are like Instagram, 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 but it's something like YouTube. It's state like that video now is six years old, but yet I still have people that find me through it mm -hmm. and I do nothing. I do nothing. Yep. It's such a different strategy. And I, I think some of the, the people who right now, like you were saying, they want to be big influencers. They want to be on Instagram. It's like you post a picture, you post a video and within 24, 48 hours, maybe a week, if you're using hashtags that are really yeah. good, it's over. Unless you're like actively sharing it out and tagging yeah. people and, and boosting it in some capacity, the content's kind of gone. Yeah. But with YouTube, that grows over time. And it's definitely like you're saying a long game strategy. You've been doing this for many, many years. Yeah. But a lot of people who could be crushing it on YouTube are not even entering that space because yeah. it's, a, it's a much bigger or higher barrier of entry and there's more risk. It, the, the, it's a long game. So you're not going to get the payout until, you know, you've got right. a little bit of traction on that platform. And it's one of those things where like you can build it and people might not find you unless you have yeah. a strategy behind what you're doing or you find a search term like bat wings that mm -hmm. randomly people are searching and yeah. no one else has really created content for that and your content is like far and away the best so it's yeah. just interesting to see that i mean for you when you weren't setting out to be an influencer did you see it as like the front end of your funnel when you got started or did that just kind of like evolve no it totally evolved i mean i started on youtube with zero but don't do this <laughs> i started on youtube with zero strategy um i at the time, I had my brick and mortar studio. I was building my online business, um, but I didn't quite know what I was doing. You know, I wanted to be a life coach. It was very like vague, you know, yeah. like what I was doing. I was just figuring it out. And um, I, I thought I was going to move. And so I made a DVD like back in the day. I yeah. made an actual like physical product, a DVD. And I gave it to my, my in-person students and they loved it. They went bananas for it. And then I was like, hey, well, they like it. I bet other people would like it. So how can I sell it? And this was like, YouTube was fairly new. And I was like, well, maybe I'll try it on YouTube. So I like started putting these little videos up on YouTube. Um, you know, and again, it would be like every six weeks, like, oh, good hair day. Like, let me just yeah. make a video real quick with my flip video camera. And then I got a camcorder and I had a camcorder for my first hundred thousand subscribers. So for people that think like, oh, I need all the stuff. You do, I mean, if you have a phone, you're good. Yeah, especially today, um, it's like yeah, it's like quality. bananas. So um, yeah, so I started that way. But then I had a friend who, you know, at the time was working at Google. She did not help me with anything, but she did. She would pay attention, and she said, "Do you know that one of your videos has a hundred thousand views?" And I was like, "What? What?" I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, "I don't know a hundred thousand people." <laughs> so that was when I was like, "Oh." all right now we're on to something you wow. know and then it was like you know I had one of those days like those miraculous days where it was like sale 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 and in fact I thought someone was messing with me 
I was like, what is going on? Because the DVD had been on there, but it was like someone had picked it up in some fitness group somewhere and was like, this, this DVD is freaking awesome. And so all these people started buying it. Whoa. And I was like, awesome. yeah, it was pretty crazy, you know? But again, it's like some of that is like luck and manifestation, but it's also energy, right? It's that like, you know, I was still doing this stuff. I was still you showed being up for it. Yeah. You showed up for exactly. it. And I think like, yes, those things can happen if you set the intention, but it's also like the law of attraction, yes, and manifestation, but it's also the law of action, yes. law of vibration, like there's 12 universal laws. So like they all yeah. play a role in making it happen. And I think totally. what you said before about in the beginning, you would put something out like every six weeks if you had a good hair day. Now you have such a consistent schedule of content. And I think yeah. someone looking in from the outside, they don't know what we're all doing behind the scenes of our business. It looks magical right. on the outside. They're like, how do you get so much done? And you really are a content ninja, but you've created systems for yourself. Yeah. So give us a little sneak peek of like, what does that actually look like to be, cause it's, cause for you, it's not just, it's not just like you're creating videos, you're creating fitness videos. So yeah. obviously you're super in shape cause you're like yeah. recording workout videos all the time. Maybe not right, but so much right now, but <laughs> you are <laughs> in, in shape eight month pregnant person with the cutest oh. bum ever. So oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So totally it's about system systematizing things for sure. So like, yeah, my philosophy is if I am putting, you know, the time and the effort, like, you know, hair and makeup, like, let's be honest, ladies, you know, ladies are listening. That's going to take you about an hour. You know what I mean? To like shower the, the hair, the makeup, like all the things. Right. So like, there's no way I'm going to shoot one video <laughs> Hell to the no. So I always batch shoot and I've done that forever. I mean, when, when, before I had my total body transformation, my, my fitness membership, I would, I was, I mean, cause I didn't, I only had one thing that I was really focusing on with videos. So I would always be like six weeks, eight weeks ahead. Like I'd be like, all right, you know, at this time it was July. I'd be like, okay, cool. I'm like good till September. You know, like it was like, I would just like bang it out and just get it done. Um, the other thing is I hired an editor early. This is something, especially with you YouTubers, like they often, and I get it, like, right. It's like you have the vision and the creative process, but that takes time. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to? And, and I could, this is one area where I could even improve, you know, where it's like give up some of the creative control and be like, okay, go. And I'm starting to do that more now, especially being pregnant with my editor. Um, and I know that you know this, Jen. So with my fitness membership, they get new videos every single month. They get a, uh, a calendar, you know, with their workouts all laid out for them. So it's a lot of content. So last year, I was like always feeling behind the eight ball. And I just was like, F this. <laughs> I'm going to start shooting this like a TV show. Because I have friends that work on TV shows. And you shoot a season. You know, so I was like, I'm going to shoot this like a season. So I was like, all right, I did the math. I'm like, okay, if I need X amount of videos, you know, I figured it out. And it was like three months of shooting, shoot four videos a week for three months, like done. So the cool thing about that, which is important for, you know, everyone to hear this, it's like my husband and I went on vacation to Europe for three weeks. Um, I basically took a month off before that, like basically, I mean, I was kind of just doing like the very bare mineral, minimum. Um, I, I went on vacation. Then we moved to Miami, um, soon thereafter got pregnant, yep. was also not able to work out during my pregnancy, but you know what? Like no one knew any different because I had so much content. I mean, even still to this day, I lived in Miami now for nine months. I still have workouts from New York that, that are being trickled into the membership, you know? And I now currently being pregnant, once I had the go to work out, I was like, bam. And I went right back into that. So I have content from now until June of 2020. So that's 11 months from now. Done. Damn. Yeah. And that's being that's pregnant cool. and like all the things, you know, I was just like, you just like it, 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 batch shooting things. Like you're, you're good to go, you know, like, so why would you do one? Have your ideas, have your, you know, if it's not fitness, you know, have, what are the ideas, the topics, the things that you want? Once that camera goes on, you know, like do at least two, three, you know, some, there have been days where I've done like six videos. Now, granted, they're not all like, you know, fitness. Like I, I can only do so many workouts in a day. Right, you're not going to do like six no, hours of fitness. But yeah. if I'm doing stuff for my membership, then I might be like, oh, cool. Let me pull three of the exercises that I did here and put it on YouTube. Mm. You know what I mean? So that like I could do it that way or do like a sit down chat one for YouTube or whatever. So it's, 
you know, batch shooting is key, key, key. Right. Because on your YouTube channel, you'll talk about fashion. You'll do some different yeah. things other, other than fitness. You've added some yeah. other things to it. Absolutely. We do a lot of lifestyle stuff. Yeah. I mean, you, you are such an expert in your area of Pilates and fitness and, and all the workouts that, because you have a variety of things. It's not just Pilates. Yeah. Um, for you, when it comes to creating content, where are you sourcing all of these ideas? You know, I get asked that question all the time, but I always just liken it to like, I taught Pilates for 20 years and I never would do the same class two weeks in a row. Wow. Like, you know, if you, it's such a myth that we think like, I'll run out of ideas. You won't mm -hmm. because people are going to ask for things. If I do get into a place of like, I don't know what to do because it happens, you know, yeah. I just ask. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want next? You know what I mean? And even if you don't have, like, look, I started with zero subscribers just like everybody else. You know, I started with not having a fitness membership. So like, yes, is it a little bit easier now? Of course it is because I have a bigger pool to, to choose from. Um, and you know what the other thing is? Don't forget, it's your business. I have yeah. people ask me to shoot things and I'm like, no. Like, just, like, I'm not available for giving you that information. You know what I mean? Like, there are certain, like, and it's, again, it's about boundaries. It's like, uh -huh. no, you know, great idea, but like, like, you know, say that. But like, I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm sure you would like that, but I'm not going to do that. Oh my God, um, I love that. I just have to take a moment. Like, I hope you guys just heard that and received that. Because I hear people telling me all the time, they're like, Jen, what do I do? My clients... They, they really want me to do this or they want me to do a live video about that or they want me to create this course, but like, I don't want to create it. And I'm just like, no, no, don't. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with the business you have. Why do you no. feel like, oh, but I'm leaving money on the table or, you know, I'm not giving my ideal client avatar what they want. And I'm like, what? The, no, like you're no. allowed to say no, like own your no. Absolutely. I mean, it's your business, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Um, I don't remember where we were going with this, but yeah, batch shooting. That. It's key. Batch, batch shooting is key. We were talking about, you know, what, how, how do you come up with ideas? And I mean, I oh. so like love being able to use my audience to, to come up with ideas. People yeah. go, oh, I don't have an audience. I have zero subscribers. Well, I mean, what inspires that inspires you. Yeah. Like go, like if I wanted to create a, a fitness thing, I'd probably be going and looking at other fitness influencers to see what are topics that they've already talked about, yeah. what are things that uh, are getting a lot of engagement on their posts, and then what are the questions underneath? Like I'm always looking at like Amazon reviews, right. the YouTube comments, because people are going to be being like, oh, this was really valuable, or I hated this, it sucked. Like look at the three-star right. reviews, or the four-star reviews, and really, you know, if that's your ideal client avatar, then you're very likely going to find some really good ideas just from some of the questions they have or, or things they're sharing. So it's all out there in public. <laughs> it's <laughs> totally out. out there. You know, it's funny. So let, to just tack onto this. So when I first started, I was in like fitness groups on Facebook and that's where, you know, I came up with some of my ideas because I would hear what they were asking for. I would he was hearing like, you know, if they followed a certain person, they're like, but my butt's getting flat. I'd be like, okay, good. How to get around her butt. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just knowing. And then I would post it in that, their group, which was, you know, obviously you have to make sure you're in the right group that will allow you to do that. Like respect people. Um, it's interesting now though, cause now I follow zero fitness influencers. Mm. Um, and there's for, for a reason, there's very few people I just follow in general. It's like, I just, sometimes it just becomes noisy and you have to know yourself, you know what I mean? And for me, it's like, I just feel better if I'm like focusing on my own thing. But what I do do is I follow a lot of people. Like I follow a lot of fashion people, makeup, style, because that's just what I like anyway. And I'm always kind of dissecting like, oh, what are they doing? Or vloggers. Like, oh, oh, I see how like organically they're putting an offer in where it doesn't feel like, hey, buy my crap, you know, but it's just like, you know, you know, like on my phone, I'm like, oh my God, I love this case. And, you know, just like very organic and people don't feel like it's slimy and gross. Mm -hmm. So I'm always just looking at like other modalities, which I think is really helpful because that way you can really just focus on being you, you know, and not being like another version of, you know, so-and-so. So that is such a powerful tip. I'm such a huge fan of cross-pollination of industries because yeah. I, I do see a lot. I work with a lot of people in the health and wellness field and they only follow people in the health and wellness field or network marketers. They're with Beachbody. They only follow people with Beachbody. And mm -hmm. if you're only seeing people in your industry stuff, 
sub, if you look at the subconscious mind, like you are being influenced by the things that, that they're talking about, you will, uh, you may very well start to question your own stuff and go, oh, well, she already talked about that. You should talk about goal setting today. Maybe I shouldn't, I hope she doesn't think yeah. I'm copying her. Like I had somebody share that in one of my groups the other day. And I'm just like, you know, if that's coming up for you, that's a really good sign to stop following those people. Like I, at this point in my business, I don't follow, like I have some very good friends and I muted them on Instagram because I, I just noticed that we have too close of what we're doing and I don't want to be influenced by what they're creating. And I really want to make sure I'm coming from a space, but I have my friends who are like fitness or manifestation experts. And I love following them because exactly that I can dissect what they're doing. Yeah. I can send people to them. I can, I can celebrate them without having to feel like I'm second guessing my own intuitive decisions. Totally. Like it really does. And, and it so leaves room for innovation. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. like how can I like, Cause you now <laughs> go out myself yeah. crying at the mastermind, <laughs> got into a little comparisonitis for a moment. And I was just like, wait, like if everything is perception, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can look at it. Like I don't do it the way they're doing and therefore I won't get the results that they're having. Mm -hmm. Or I can shift my perception to, I do it my way in the way that feels best for me. And it's, you know, fun and there's a level of flexibility. So therefore I can innovate it, you know, not like doing crazy things, but like just so that it feels more organically me. And, and the thing about business, which took me a really long time to figure out, like you got to test things. You mm. just don't know. We don't know. Like there's no crystal ball that's like, <laughs> this is going to work. We all wish there was. It ain't out there. <laughs> it's just not, you know, like you got to test things. You have to experiment. And I love and that. I think so working with James, like I didn't really yeah. get that because I'm like a dancer, like, oh, you rehearse and you practice and you, you get it. And like, that's it. And it's like, no, like it's okay. If something totally flops, cool. We'll do it that way. Next time <laughs> learned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. Next time someone in one of my groups asks me like, should I do this or that? I'm just going to say, let me go check my crystal ball. <laughs> Exactly. One moment, totally. One moment, the chalkboard in the sky. <laughs> Let me go check in with my Ouija board. Give me a sec. Oh my God, that is so hysterical. But but really, I think that that allows us to put some humor behind how much we sometimes try to look outside of ourselves yeah. or want to control so much of the results. And kind of also what you were just saying, taking what someone else is doing and, and judging or diminishing the way that we're showing up. Because at the end of the day, like there's an infinite number of ways that you can take a strategy and apply it to your own business and your yeah. own energy. And what I found is like, there are certain style launches that just don't feel good for me. Yeah. It just doesn't align with my personality. It doesn't align with the boundaries that I've created for my business. And I think just being able to give people that permission that like, if it doesn't feel good and there's heaviness, like, ask yourself like why does it feel heavy yeah you know like those are like some conversations that you and I have had over the years like just like what is it about that like okay what do you want to release okay if it feels heavy and you're like oh this the part that feels heavy is the editing yeah. well what if you had an editor oh then it would feel great right okay cool so let's do that and now you have the business that you want and you're showing up powerfully yeah so it's huge yeah so huge so huge um so with now you are eight months, eight months pregnant, which is so exciting. So exciting. So crazy. <laughs> First little beautiful baby coming into the world. <laughs> so for you, obviously this is, this has been, I mean, you've handled it beautifully. You've planned appropriately, probably better than just about anybody that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> so what do you, and like, how do you feel like your vision and your values have already started to shift now knowing that she's coming Ooh, in there. massively you know um so it's I think it's this okay I say this now we can reflect back on this after yeah. she comes okay because okay. so I you know you don't know what you don't know yeah. but I will tell you this one of the greatest you know I know the kind of mother that I want to be I'm gonna like cry mm. I know the kind of mother that I want to be and I know that I want to be really present and you know we've wanted this for so long, you know, like this was like, no, like, whoops, I'm pregnant. It was like, yeah, we're getting pregnant. Yep. So, um, 
That being said, I started thinking about it and thinking about my business and that I love my business and I want my daughter to look up and be like, like wow, my mom creates a life for herself and like from ideas. Like, mm. that's pretty cool. I know at some point, like probably when she's like 12, she's not going to think I'm cool at all. But like, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, she'll think I'm pretty cool. I think when she gets that. Yeah. Um, you know, then she'll come back to the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that being said, I also think that running a business has helped me so much because it's the same. Like I started after, you know, like towards the end of my first trimester, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be a mom. Like, how am I going to do this? And like having like, how do you raise a kid? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I, I've never done this before. Cause it's that, that like unknown. And just like in business, I wouldn't like, let me figure out how to do a web page. I was like, we can't do this alone. We need to get help. You know? So that's like one of the first things that, that my husband and I did. I like talked to him and I said, look, I love you. I love our life. And like, I want us to stay happy. Like we have a beautiful relationship. I'm so grateful. And I'm like, I want it to stay that way. So that being said, like we need some help. We need to hire someone to help us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and that doesn't mean I'm less of a mom. It doesn't mean anybody else is raising my kids. It doesn't mean anything, but it's like, why would I try to figure it out? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Like yesterday I had a birthing class. I did a CPR class. I'm not sitting there Googling it. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, okay, there are people that know so much more than I do, you know? Now, the other thing, it, it is the unknown. It's just like in business. We test things. We don't know what's going to work. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to feel like to have this little girl. You know what I mean? This yeah. beautiful little girl. Like I might be like, oh my God, all I want to do is stare at her face all day. I might also be like, let's be honest, moms. I might be like, yo, I need to talk to an adult. <laughs> and like, I don't want to smell a poopy diaper right now. You know? Yeah. So I have a sense that it's going to be like a mixture, you know? Yeah. And, and the moms that I know, it's like, and the beauty is of being an entrepreneur is I get to decide. Yeah. I get to decide exactly what that looks like and how that feels best for me, for my family. I want to be really present. I want to be really involved in my daughter's life and I still want to grow my business. So I get to do that. And so even now I told my team yesterday, I was like, I'm working four hours a day and that's it. Wow. Like if it's not done, it's either handed over to you or it gets done tomorrow, but like, that's it. And that's already, it's like, and half the time I'm like, no, oh, I did two hours today. Like, and I got it all done because I'm like laser focused. And I'm just training myself now. And all of these like mothering skills I'm learning because of running a business. Oh my God. That was just so good. You know, so we'll, see. Like, <laughs> we'll see what, it, you know, like how it all, I'm sure I'm going to have moments of like being freaking exhausted and all of those things. Yeah. And I also look very closely and you and I know, like we have many super successful, amazing mothers that's like resources at my fingertips mm -hmm. that, you know, have boundaries that have beautiful businesses are making a huge impact on the world and are like really dedicated to their families. And that's the kind of mom yeah. I want to be. Amen. I think you, you, you just said it perfectly. Like you, you really do have a clear vision of yeah. what you want your relationship with your husband to look like. Yes you have set a very clear vision and intention for what kind of mother you want to be. You have a clear yeah. vision and intention for the relationship you want with your daughter. And I totally. think, you know, in business, when we've got that clear vision and we have a, a clear understanding of an intention behind how we want to interact with our clients, how we want to interact with our team, how we want to interact, you know, with the hours and the energy of our business, like everything you just said, like is a, is a totally. beautiful mirror for this. When we know the end result, we know the vision, like that leads everything then the how becomes like oh okay cpr class let's go let's go get that done totally that off because that that totally. moves towards the vision totally and even with like bringing on someone you know it's like you know we we hired a nurse and it's yeah. like I, there's no shame in that you know what i mean like i'm like i sh this woman has been raising kids for 30 some odd years is a is is a professional like she's yeah. gonna help me set routines, you know, just have the healthiest, happiest baby instead of me being like, <laughs> you know, like all yeah. the time. You well, know? yeah, you being sleep deprived, who does that help? No like that one. helps no not one. my baby either. She's going to yeah. pick up on that energy. So, yeah. you know. Oh my God. So many, so many powerful lessons within this. Yeah. I'm just like taking a moment to just like <laughs> let this sink in because that's everything. And I think with business too, 
if you're not sleeping and you're staying up till 3 a.m., hustling your face off, how are you, you're not serving your clients, you're not serving yourself, you're not serving your family, you're not serving your vision. Yep. And people feel that energy. Yep. And I, I had a powerful uh, aha the other day. I was in a deep meditation and I, I was, you know, asking for certain guidance and I yep. saw my niece's face and she's eight months old. She's the cutest freaking little nugget. And I just kept hearing, she's your teacher. She's your teacher. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And what I realized was when having her in my life and having her in the world, when we're all together as a family, everyone's obsessed with her. Mm. They're following her every move. They're watching her. They're studying her. They want to hold her. Everyone's like, my turn, give her to me. I want to hold her. And when you're not holding her, you're like creepily like having a conversation, (laughs) but like watching out of the corner of your eye, just like your clock and like, where's the baby? Where'd she go? Like everybody just wants to be in and around her energy because it's so pure. It's so vibrant. And my brother and sister-in-law do an amazing job. My sister-in-law is like the most ninja at creating boundaries. It's like seven o'clock. Nope. We're leaving. We need to go. She needs to go to bed bottle. And like, this is the most like routine. And I have seen how the routine for her has made her, everyone's like, she's such a happy baby. And she is because she has that in place. But what's what's interesting about that is like people just want to be in and around this baby's energy because it's so vibrant. It's so pure. And I was saying the other day, like, that's what magnetic leadership is. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing for us to do. There's nothing for us to create until we are in that space and that energy of vibrancy, because that's what attract is attracting people to us. I love that. So if I love magnetic leadership. Yeah. Like that's thanks. I hope you have that coin because <laughs> that's good. That's real good. Thank Thank you. Casey. <laughs> I was sharing that the other day with uh, Mr. James Wedmore, and he was uh, he said the same thing. He's like, you, you got that domain? Yeah. Like, I what mean, that you you want to buy that right it's, now? It's no, taken. It's already taken. So yeah. it's the, the, I, I missed the vote on, on that piece, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we were laughing about that, but that's, but that's really what it is. And when I, yeah. when I said that, it's like, everyone can see that picture of that beautiful, vibrant baby, whoever, whatever baby you're thinking of, yeah. that's just pure, like non-judgmental, beautiful, bright, easy energy. Totally. And, and I love what you said too, about your, you're a sister-in-law and, and that, so there's systems and structure. Yep. And there's that energy. Like mm-hmm. you want to build a really successful business. <laughs> you need both. You need both. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Oh my God. This was so amazing. Are there any last like quick nuggets of wisdom or just a, like a way to just put a button on everything we talked about? You know, I used to think that there was always like some trick that I was missing, you know, like some magical strategy or, you know, whatever. And, you know, the real secret is like, you gotta be consistent. You you gotta be focusing on what you're really good at. And you, you know, you want to have systems and structures in place and you have to manage your mindset and your energy. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. You know, like, it doesn't matter if you're, you're, you know, an MLM, if you're teaching business, if you're teaching fitness, if you're teaching love, if you're teaching like money, it, like it starts between your ears mm. and like who you're being. And, and once you have that, and then you build on, you know, systems and structure and, and having all of these, these pieces, and it's not that much really, that's the key. Like you, you cannot fail. Like you cannot fail if you're, if you're operating from like managing your energy. So good. <laughs> That's it. I mean, if we overcomplicate it, we want to put a system to everything. We want to organize it as human beings. Yeah. Our brains are trying to like, it's like, but what if it is just that simple? Yeah. So I actually want to give our listeners today a call to action to sit down and actually journal around the idea of, uh, what am I available to? What am I available for? And what am I not available? That's for? good. Well, that's all you, boo. Like you gave me that <laughs> gift. I'm like, I want to like, that's why I was like, I need to have you come on so that you can really explain like how you came to that. Cause it's, I mean, with your story and everything and, and yeah. getting pregnant, like you just really, that gave you the, the extra oomph to create that boundary and draw that line in the sand. And Cause at the time you were, you were pregnant during that launch and you were just like, I literally yeah. can't be stressed for the health of the yeah. baby. So like, yeah. <laughs> I, I literally will not allow it in. Nope. I cannot allow it in. It will not be allowed in. So yeah. 
I, I think it's such a beautiful story, such a beautiful example of being an incredible leader of that magnetic leadership uh, and, and really being able to elevate and help more people make a bigger impact and pursue the vision of inspiring other people to grow businesses in a way that feel aligned. Yep. That's amazing. Um, Thanks for having me. We should have, do a follow-up after I have the child. Oh my God. I would <laughs> like, love please, that. like six months, <laughs> six months, you know, and once I start coming back in and, and, and we'll see. <laughs> oh, that would be so super fun. So I would yeah. love for you just quickly share, where can people go to connect with you, to thank you for what you shared today, to learn more about you and your membership? which awesome. I'm in, which is amazing. Yes. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> um, so the best place, you know, Instagram, I love Insta stories. It's like my fave, 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 don't tell YouTube, but it really is. So <laughs> it's just my name, Tracy Campoli, no E, it's just T-R-A-C-Y. Um, and also YouTube, you know, I put out new videos every single week. And then um, my membership, which I know Jen, you're a part of, mm -hmm. it's just tracycampolimembers.com. We do open and close the doors, but you know, if, if the doors are closed, you can always put your name on the wait list, which I encourage you to do because we give you some really fun, juicy goodies while you wait. Yay. <laughs> Guys, go connect with Tracy, give her a shout out, tag us on your Instagram stories and let us know what was the biggest aha, biggest takeaway. And I really want to hear from you guys. What is one thing that you are declaring you are no longer available for? Yes. Love that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I just am so grateful for you and for your friendship. I, I just love you so much. Likewise, my dear. Yeah. You're the bee's knees. I just adore you. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today. And guys, we'll talk to you soon.